With smartphone cameras becoming more complex and advanced every day, it really is a great era for photography and content creation. With Apple's iterative improvements to the iPhone this generation, they've really tried to take some advanced photography techniques and features and automate them and bring them together to make it easy for sort of everybody to get the benefits of those. And in this video, I wanna look at those, how they work, and also share with you guys a workflow that I use with my photos and video that I think works really well. And I'm interested to see what you guys think of some of the sample images that I've taken over the last week. So the first big feature with this new camera is the Smart HDR. And what this does is uses the phone's processor and cameras to run a continuous four frame buffer in the background. So the minute you hit the shutter button, it takes a series of exposures and then it combines the best parts of each of those exposures automatically into an image that supposedly gives you the highest dynamic range and preserves detail throughout the photograph. Now here's some sample images that I took compared to the non-smart HDR counterpart. So let me know what you think of both of these, but to me, I think the difference is incremental. I don't think it's like a massive leap forward, but the nice thing is I think Apple's erred on the side of doing less to the photos and not more. And I really actually do like the conservative approach so you don't have a bunch of weird stuff happening in the pictures. Now a tip is you can save an original photo next to it. And I would always do that just in case the Smart HDR does something weird, you still have the standard photo as well. Now, another quick tip is that if you decide to lock the focus and exposure point, you can slide on the screen to manually sort of set the exposure then to a level that you're comfortable with. And this is really useful if you don't like the auto exposure, if it's sort of like a tricky lighting setting or you wanna do something more creative with your picture. Now, as far as the workflow that I like to use, I use an app called Halide for the photos. And what this allows me to do is to shoot the photos in raw or DNG format, which gives you access to sort of the unprocessed sensor data and gives you a little more flexibility in your editing program. And with that, I use Lightroom CC. And this is sort of the new cloud-based Lightroom competitor from Adobe. Now, the reason I'm starting to like Lightroom CC over the classic desktop version which I used and still love is that you can save all of your presets and photos automatically to the cloud. So it makes it really easy to transition between your smartphone, your desktop computer at home, and even a tablet or mobile device. And with the bigger screen of like the XS Max, I can actually do a lot of the photo editing right on the phone. And the nice thing is your edits transfer right to your home computer. So to me, this is a workflow that has saved me a ton of time because traditionally I would have to go home, export the photos, and then import them into to my Lightroom catalog, and then they would only exist there. So it was just a little clumsy in a lot of different ways. Now, in addition to that, I did a little testing with the video that comes out of this camera, and I think it's the same as the photos. It's a small incremental improvement over the last generation, but if you look at the 1080p footage that I took, it is pretty high quality. There's good dynamic range, there's good detail, it's fairly sharp. Like. Everything about it, I think if you're in the right settings and, and do it properly, you can really get some good quality results from this. Now, one thing where they have to do a little adjustment, in my opinion, is still on the portrait mode. It's gotten tremendously better than where it started, but if you look at these sample shots, you could see that it's really situational if it's a convincing replacement to the bokeh that is naturally created using a DSLR. Sometimes it looks super fake and weird, but sometimes it actually looks decent. Now, one area that they need to improve, in my opinion, for sure, is in the new skin smoothing or retouching that they're doing. Um, I think they went a little bit too far with it. So the nice thing is they can probably dial that back in a software update. Now, I think the overall thing is that this is not the best smartphone camera on the market right now, but it is really good. And I think if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you're not gonna probably switch to an Android if you're the majority of people just because they have a better camera. So if you're in this world, it's best to figure out how to get the most out of it, how to maximize the quality um, and your workflow for this. If you have any questions about this camera or wanna see a different video or a comparison, let me know in the comments and I will try to make that for you guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And as always guys, thanks for watching and see you next time.